up with these ugly retro graphics? If anything of this nature comes out of your mouth after you've had a look at Nidhogg's minimalist visual presentation, you should probably die a hundred deaths in a game of Nidhogg. If you can't appreciate the game's aesthetic, then your body truly deserves to be crushed by the mighty jaws of Nidhogg himself. That's because when this happens, you'll have become the exalted victor of a thrilling contest. Unless you have something against glorious triumph, your personal taste isn't going to keep you from savoring that moment. Every match begins the same way. Two figures assume a fencing stance and engage in a duel to the death. Should the individual on the left prevail, he'll begin running to the right. Should the one on the right prevail, he'll begin running to the left. Your opponent will appear before you again and again, attempting to halt your advance, take your life, and seize the initiative. The arrow indicator on either side of the screen acts as a kind of metaphorical football, and as long as it's with you, you can keep driving toward your opponent's end zone. There are no downs, but there are plenty of deaths, and the moment you're slain, it's the other player's turn to be on offense. Nidhogg is a tug of war, a one-on-one -on -one fight, and a contest of wills. You might ride a roller coaster of adrenaline and emotion swinging back and forth between winning and losing, or ride a tidal wave of momentum toward your victory. While fencing carries some connotation of nobility, Nidhogg most often feels like a desperate struggle. There's certainly room for a bit of elegance with the basic swordplay as you vary the height of your blade and try to disarm or jab at your opponent, but you might also throw the sword or drop your foe to the ground with a diving kick or leg sweep. If you reach your fallen opponent before they recover, you can quickly snap their spine and be on your way. Every technique is accomplished with simple directional inputs and only two buttons, making the game easy to pick up in a couple of minutes, but the combined possibilities create countless variations to a dance of death and hilarity. Every move has a counter move, and the game moves about as fast as you can think. If you'd like it to be faster, try Turbo Mode, one of the optional gameplay tweaks that include boomerang swords and low gravity. Mastering the elements of combat to control space and outsmart your opponent is endlessly enjoyable, but as long as you have the blessing of the arrow, you can also try running away. The frantic pursuit of a runaway rival leads to some of the most entertaining and exciting moments in the game. Even so, nothing beats a clean and decisive stab, except maybe wiggling the sword around afterwards as your vanquished foe spurts brightly colored pixels that stain the ground beneath you. Four stages play host to the action, and various configurations of doorways, gaps, low ceilings, and intentionally obscured views have a strong bearing on strategy and ensure a certain amount of variety to confrontation. A player frustrated with a particularly jumpy adversary in the open wilds might welcome the narrow passages of the mines, where you can only depend on your skill with the blade. Despite the limited number of arenas, it feels like there's plenty of room to fight. Nidhogg possesses many of the qualities that make competitive fighting games great, and like Street Fighter or Tekken, the best way to play is with someone who's sitting right next to you. Nidhogg excels as a spectator sport, and it's rarely played quietly. The game smartly supports local multiplayer tournaments, but it also lets players battle computer-controlled opponents or look for competition online. Network matches aren't always perfect, but the game often allows for reasonably fair matches. To put it plainly, Nidhogg is incredibly fun. If you can appreciate the game's style for what it is, and you don't have an ego as fragile as glass, you'll delight in testing your mettle against another's. And even if you lose, at least you didn't get eaten by some horrible beast.